States Road Development. We're here to, to celebrate of all of us who live here in South Africa. So Maharaj, to give you a proper welcome, you're actually a um, round of applause. Program Director, a very warm welcome to Minister Didiza. Thank you for making the time to be with us. Uh, the DG, Dr. Guest here today for the biosecurity is a priority for South Africa, for which the responsibility needs to be shared between government, industry, universities, communities, and other research institutions. A strong biosecurity system ensures safe trade in plant and animal products, tree and phytosanitary threats. This has a major impact sorry, on our economy and addressing our triple negatives of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. Preempting and continuously monitoring and evaluating the safety of products of plant and animal origin and immediately responding to any threats that arise is essential for sustainable local and international trade for agriculture, forestry, food, nutrition, and livelihood security for an economic development. And with Innovation Africa at UP as the coordinator and the anchor for this initiative. Led by Professor Bernard Slippers, Innovation Africa at UP is one of the University of Pretoria's transdisciplinary research platforms to underpin frontier research, initially focusing on the future of agriculture and forestry. Innovation Africa at UP capitalizes on opportunities that lie at the intersection of biotechnology and information technology. Of this, the National Biosecurity Hub that is being launched here today is an excellent example. With the networks and capacity already established, the new connections being added on a continuous basis, innovation of the agricultural and the National Biosecurity Hub will draw on a broad base of research expertise across leading institutions, including the Faculty of National Agricultural Sciences and our Faculty of Veterinary Sciences that plays an important part in animal sciences and other disciplines. This will contribute to keep of willingness, expertise, and of course hard work to get us to this official launch today of the National Biosecurity Hub. And it is something we can celebrate as it will play an inestimable role in building resilience in our country's economy, instilling confidence in our trading partners about our biosecurity strategies and standards, and meeting all our trading partners' related compliance regulations. This will help to increase our market access, economic growth, and job creation along the value chain. For this, we are grateful to the two departments present here today to help us to realize this activity. Through the hub, we have now an essential national key point where specialists and technical experts from the industry, government, and research institutions can achieve a number of goals, of course, including combining the strengths in increasing national sanitary and phytosanitary, commonly referred to as SPS capacity, expanding research of known and emerging biosecurity threats, developing the required transformative human capital development in the biosecurity field, of course, providing information and research services to clients in the public and private sectors, and of course, meeting the SPS requirements of international trade and promoting engagement on SPS matters through appropriate communication structures. This hub will empower South Africa in the monitoring and early detection of biosecurity issues and speedy and appropriate response to contain and eradicate risks. The hub will significantly em enhance collaborative working arrangements between government and stakeholders affected by biosecurity threats, rather than having these groups act independently or in isolation. As we know, if we work together, we can have strength and have more impact. As we all know, the risk posed by plant and animal exports and imports conducted diligently to prevent the introduction of pests and diseases from imported and exported communities. In addition, we have immediately comes to mind. Government has been dealing with the foot and mouth crisis, but we are confident that through the hub, government will be greatly assisted in dealing with this disease, strengthening surveillance networks and bolstering control systems. An important role of the National Biosecurity Hub given that diseases know no borders and will be to work on strengthening biosecurity systems in the region, on the continent, and with all trading partners beyond our borders. 
In response to the fall army worm invasion, for example, our grain industry took the lead in putting surveillance systems in place and researching the biology of the pest as part of the consortium with government as the regulator to learn as fast as we could about this threat and how to deal with it, including making sure the appropriate agrochemicals were made available. The monitoring systems are still in place and ongoing research is being done by universities, government and industry. Robust biosecurity, taking the right preventative measures or acting fast during the early stages of an outbreak critically helps to prevent and reduce its spread. The development and maintenance of the National Biosecurity Hub will of course require dedicated long-term and sustainable funding in order to leverage the human and financial resources and infrastructure required to support the National Biosecurity System. We look forward as the University of Pretoria to partnering with you in striving for the highest levels of biosecurity for our country, continent and the world so that we can play a pivotal role in secure food systems as outlined in the Sustainable Development Goals or to working together and building something that our country can be very proud of and future generations can really be proud of. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you, Prof Maharaj, for those kind words. I think you started out by being grateful to the Department of Science Innovation and Department of Agriculture, Rural Land Reform and Ro Rural Development for the opportunity, but I would say that we'd like to say thank you for being an implementing agency. Without you, this was not possible. So again, thank you for your cooperation in this process. So like Department of Science Innovation, she's gonna give you a, a presentation on some of the high level outcomes of the National Biosecurity Hub uh, performance um, I can't see you, our favorite department, but I think you're up the top of the list. So, Maneshri, please come forward. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Honorable Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols are observed. It is a pleasure for me to present the high-level outcomes of the National Biosecurity Hub. In my presentation, I will be giving a strategic overview in terms of why we're doing this, how the hub is set up, but also some examples of work that is ongoing. Next slide, please. Now, some of the key policy linkages in the work that we do is the National Bioeconomy Strategy. The National Bioeconomy Strategy was approved by Cabinet in 2013, and it defines a new paradigm in terms of how we use biotechnology to address the needs of the country. It's about using bioinnovative technologies, products, processes, and services to contribute to socioeconomic impact. And we do this through a value chain approach noting that there are many bottlenecks in the value chain that we will need to address to ensure that the impact is realized. There are strong links with the National Bioeconomy Strategy, with the new Decadal Plan of Agriculture, which really positions us as a nation to use innovation to contribute to service delivery innovation, but also to modernize productive sectors of the economy, such as agriculture. And in doing so, we want to be able to support inclusivity and transformation, and to do this through creating an enabling environment for partnerships, creativity, learning, and entrepreneurship. And this link is very strongly with the agricultural and agro-processing master plan. Just, uh, um, and within the agriculture and agro-processing master plan is the social impact really to support food security, inclusive growth, job creation, and export growth. It also positions the Department of Agriculture as the lead sector line function department to deal with challenges that have been affecting the sector, but to look at how partnerships can ensure that agriculture is be can be revitalized 
uh, through support for various and bringing various stakeholders together to address some of the big challenges. Now some of the most, next slide please, some of the most glaring challenges affecting agriculture include climate change, food security, but also pests and diseases that have a significant impact in terms of how we do our work. The, the theory of change for how innovation can revitalize agriculture is through interventions, outputs and outcomes in crop and animal improvement, agro-processing and value chain development in order to support increased growth in the sector but also to support productivity, increased incomes as well as to support competitiveness and sustainability and strengthen biosecurity systems. And through this, and this really takes, we, in this we take our cue from the National Development Plan, which positions innovation as a driver of such growth. So the theory of change really articulates how we can do this in practice. Next slide, please. So pests and diseases have a significant impact on our food. This is, in particular, some of the uh, quarantine diseases, both in the plant health sector, such as fall armyworm, tuta, absoluta, uh, and banani, banana bungee top virus, and also in the animal health sector. And in his opening remarks, Prof. Maharaj alluded to the FMD, etc. But there are quite a number of other diseases that really impact our food security. So new pests and diseases also arise as a result of climate change. And these affect not only uh, the production levels, but also affect the availability of food. Now, if we look at plant and animal health, if we are producing uh, goods in terms of plant and animal health, it's also critical to look at the safety of these products. Because if you're looking at a full value chain, it's about the safe and nutrition pro nutritious, nutritious products, which also then arrive in our market. <coughs> and there is a need for uh, better, re sufficient regulation, particularly in the informal market, uh, for capacity development in terms of phytosanitary measures, for looking at quality issues, uh, as well as ensuring that we safeguard our trade uh, in the country. Now, in addressing the pest and disease management strategies, that means innovation and research, regulation, risk analysis, capacity building and monitoring and evaluation and surveillance as well as decision support systems that help us protect our food systems. Next slide, please. This slide then sort of just positions how the bioeconomy strategy and the master plan are actually addressing these. In terms of the bioeconomy strategy, we look at crop, plant and animal improvement, and breeding for resistance, as well as molecular detection and diagnosis. Using digital agriculture, it's about knowledge information hubs with scientifically validated information that can support decision support. It's also about ensuring productive value chains uh, and also looking, like I've mentioned previously, about safeguarding our food in terms of food safety and nutrition and looking at precision agriculture for food quality and safety. In terms of the master plan, biosecurity, uh, the focus on biosecurity is to enhance the state's capacity on biosecurity control measures and protocols, agricultural R&D and technology adoption. So they're very strong linkages and we're happy to partner with the Department of Agriculture to launch the National Biosecurity Hub. The, the Agriculture Master Plan has been approved by Minister Deziza in May 2022. Next slide, please. So taking a look at regulation in the policy implementation space, the National Biosecurity Hub will use international standards to develop national systems for phytosanitary and phytosanitary systems in South Africa. And this is governed by the World Trade Organization's Agreement on Sanitary and Phytosanitary Measures, 
which specifically provides three standard setting bodies, the International Plant Protection Convention, the World Organization for Animal Health, and the Codex Alimentarius. And the goal of the Biosecurity Hub is to use these international standards to develop national systems for sanitary and phytosanitary sy systems in South Africa, to build technical and information management services to meet the SPS requirements of international trade. Next slide, please. So the vision of the Biosecurity Hub is to be relevant across all agriculture and forestry sectors. So whilst we have the Department of Agriculture here, in terms of the DSI and the bioeconomy strategy, we look at agriculture, forestry, and fisheries. And we've been working with the forestry sector as well, and we'll continue to do so. And so secondly, it, we want to significantly increase the capacity available in to the phytosanitary regulatory authorities in South Africa. We want to provide research and information services to the public and private sectors with a view to strengthen biosecurity and meet our SPS requirements of international trade. Next slide, please. So what will the Biosecurity Hub do? It serves as a platform to prevent, respond, and manage pests and diseases that threaten plant health, animal health, and food safety. We want to conduct research on known as well as emerging biosecurity threats so that we can protect our food in terms of long-term sustainability. We, we have already started developing a biosecurity information hub to store and manage SPS and related information, which is really critical components, and I'll talk a bit more about that. We want to promote engagements on phytosanitary matters and ensure appropriate communication structures, but also leverage the necessary resources to do so. Next slide, please. So the Biosecurity Hub is a centralized center with Innovation Ac Africa as a key coordinator as mentioned by Prof. Maharaj, it's an excellent example of partnership between government, regulators, policymakers, researchers, farmers, and civil society. It has oversight in terms of a biosecurity steering committee, and the work of the Information Hub is coordinated by Innovation Africa. So through the Biosecurity Hub, it will enable a network of public-private partnerships that will support the necessary research into, exist, into existing as well as emerging threats threatening our food. And already there are a number of memorandum of agreements between various partners to try and address this. Our target customers are SPS regulatory authorities, industry bodies, associations, importers, exporters, producers, processors, forestries, and nurseries. Next slide, please. So what will be the key focus of the hub? Firstly, in operations, and we've already mentioned some of this, uh, including risk analyses, surveillance, emergency responses, inspections, diagnostic services, and quarantine services. And secondly, the focus is on research, uh, as I've mentioned, to, to look at the potential and, and current threats. But it's also about supporting policy development and capacity development, and the provision of expertise and technical assistance, the necessary capacity <coughs> in terms, not only for the public and private sector, but looking at how we train people in, in SPS development, curricular development, etc. It also looks critically at how we ensure that we have the right scientific capacity to do biosecurity, not only in terms of masters and PhDs, but also agronomists, technicians, things that, and, and other uh, interns, where we are taking graduates and looking and training them with practical aspects allow them to make a significant contribution and create the value that we are looking at. The Biosecurity Information Hub is a central repository, and it's really w what will harness all of the work that's been done in the, in the sector and in the country in terms of biosecurity. It's about 
making sure we have the necessary, not only di in terms of di the necessary information, not uh, only in terms of who is doing the diagnostics, but regulated pest risk data sheets, commodity pests, and also ensuring that we are able to use this for ongoing surveillance and monitoring and enable quick responses in terms of methodologies uh, to deal with threats. Next slide, please. So the compilation of the e-journal, Biosecurity in South Africa, a renewed focus, is really documenting all of the work that's currently being done in the country in biosecurity. It's a significant step because it reflects the commitment of all parties, in the, uh, including yourselves in the room, to work together to build an effective and efficient national biosecurity system. In the next slides, I present a few examples of some of the work leading up to the development of the biosecurity hub, but also some examples of where innovation is already making an, a difference. It, 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 it does not detail all of the examples in the journal, but it points to where innovation is guiding and leading us. Next slide, please. So some of the existing work of the hub in the Plant Health Consortium, and I think Dr. Maharaj also mentioned some of the work that's already been done in Fall Army One, but the Plant Health Consortium was established exactly to look uh, and be at some of the economically important pest diseases and weeds in the plant health sector, but to be able to respond to threats uh, presented by quarantine pests and diseases. Uh, it looks, it has looked at pathogen uh, biology, uh, interactions with the host and the environment, disease detection and diagnosis and surveillance, uh, as well as support to farmers with technology or innovation support on farm. And the digital agriculture technology that we started to implement will certainly help them with that as well. So it's also looked at soilborne diseases in such as sclerotinia, which causes so uh, hu huge losses in soybean, canola and sunflower. It looked at screening of maize diseases in various provinces, and we've had significant work being done on fall armyworm. And Dr. Maharaj mentioned the work in particular in terms of how fall armyworm is identified. It was actually identified by the Agricultural Research Council through their national scientific collections that are hosted by the DSI and classified as national public good assets. And subsequently to its identification, the Department of Agriculture was informed, which led to a quick chain of control measures and in shared information via organized agriculture, such as Grain South Africa. Next slide, please. Secondly, the work on the Plant Health Consortium uh, started the work on digital agriculture. And together with the forestry sector as well, ABA funded the development of a platform to support digital tools and technologies for biosecurity. And this supports our strategic imperative to ensure that we modernize the sector. The Information Hub coordinated by Innovation Africa is a digital platform for diagnostic surveillance and monitoring of pests dise and diseases, and as well as developing early warning systems for the future. It includes the data warehousing, collection of relevant data sources, including historic and current data, and and the source of these data include pathogen diagnostic clinics, farmers and companies and extension services, and key contributors have been CropWatch, the Institute of Commercial Forestry Research, and FABI in the collection of data. It will also look at ongoing pest and pathogen surveillance with a view to integration, as well as ensuring that it serves as a national resource providing scientifically validated information and a network of all the scientific expertise that is able to contribute and make a difference in the event of a threat. And it, uh, there are quite a number of partners who are already on board. Next slide, please. So some examples in the animal health space. The spread of animal diseases such as foot and mouth disease and avian influenza are addressed by the Department of Agriculture in collaboration with quite a number of partners, including the Faculty of Veterinary Sciences at the University of Pretoria, the ARC Agricultural Research Council, <coughs> and a number of industry associations, such as the Poultry Association, as well as the Red Meat Producers Organization. 
And control measures include inspections, movement control, physical separation, vaccination, and traceability. And I'll talk about the LITS traceability and uh, system in a, in a little mo in a moment. There's also research focused on the University of Pretoria uh, in terms of development of a vaccine for avian influenza H6N2. And this is endemic to South Africa, so we can develop a vaccine for it. And the partners are the UP Saatchi Research Chair and the CSIR. <coughs> the DSI and the TIER also invested in the development and validation of a point of care veterinary diagnostic that has now been spun out by a company called Tokobio. And this technology actually combines biotechnology with digital technology so that you can track the spread of a disease in real time. And this technology is currently being validated. So samples may be collected in field, but the software can track the spread of the disease as it moves in real time. So the ABIP program uh, of the DSI supported also the completion of diagnostics for aquaculture. And this is critical because the CSIR is developing lab-on-chip technologies, which is really about changing the way we do our, our business, where you can really uh, test for multiple diseases and have uh, big data systems that really collate this information and allow you to really be effective in terms of multiple diseases. Next slide, please. Uh, there are quite a number of projects and programs that are currently be supported by the Animal Health Technology Innovation Cluster Program that is led by the Technology Innovation Agency. And it includes all of the technology developers <coughs> in the animal health space, including ARC, UP, University of Cape Town, <coughs> as well as the CSIR. Um, and it's there are quite a number of projects which are at various stages of commercialization. Uh, the one that I've mentioned, which has already been commercialized, is the point of care diagnostic for avian influenza and FMD by Tokobio. Next slide, please. So some examples of the work in food safety. The Center for Food Safety in Applied Science and uh, a, a consortium comprising of Stellenbosch University's Listeria, specifically the ST6 organism, that caused a huge outbreak of listeriosis in South Africa. And I think that work was significant, and we can really learn from some of the lessons that have come out of that. Um, secondly, the Livestock Identification and Traceability System is an innovative biometric system for livestock. Animal identification systems are mandatory prerequisites to international trade, and implementation, therefore, is critical to access international markets, uh, such as the EU, China, as well as the US. Uh, and currently, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development is rolling out this uh, project together with some support also from the CSIR. Once it's complete, it will support preparedness for pandemics and ensuring resilient and safe food supply chains. Lastly, we're also supporting a number of international programs and, and DSI has supported one of our EU uh, Eureka programs uh, in terms of one of our local companies that is looking at uh, sensor technology for food quality as the fruit moves along the fruit sorter. So and this is a collaboration with the Netherlands, and once this technology uh, is, 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 is complete, uh, we have uh, the project will support local manufa manufacturing in South Africa as a first choice. Next slide, please. So lastly, just to emphasize, modern agriculture has changed the way we approach agriculture. And thr through the hub, we are provided with the tools of how we can inf increase efficiencies in terms of biosecurity, but also support growth. Biosecurity has a significant impact on food security, food safety, and trade. It, is therefore, it therefore affects every citizen of the country, be it direct or indirect. With that, I thank you. Last slide, please. Can we get another round of applause?
I mean, I mean, sometimes you go for celebrations for different reasons, weddings, funerals, and so forth, you know, end of tears and after tears and so forth. But this is really something to celebrate. I mean, I, I know a few years ago we were looking at the DSI um, values, and one of the things was like this issue of, ex of excellence. And then I think I remember Professor Jonas Letty said this issue of relevance. You can't have excellence without relevance. So as she presented on the excellent what we were doing, she also spoke to the issues of relevance, right? So the issues of food security. I'm, I'm, you know, some of us all come from different backgrounds. Um, and food security is something I think a lot, quite a few people experience challenges with. And the fact that we're doing research to ensure that we can improve that. Um, food security affects a child who has to study for exams. If you don't, if you can't eat, you can't study and do well in school. And it's such a part of our lives. So again, thank you so much to the team at DSI, but also the DARAD team. You were there front and center. You saw the excellence work in the Plant Health Consortium, um, and then also a plug-in to another portfolio, just looking at the work at OBP that you do on vaccines. Actually, that work you're doing is a good, um, is a good foundation for actually moving into vaccines for humans. So I think this is the work that will, I guess, leap, leap, help us leapfrog um, globally um, for aspirations we have in other sectors. So um, I'm going to ask the panel, I mean, the, the um, VIPs to stay where you are because now there's a video to be shown, messages of support from the International Plant Protection Convention and the World Organization for Animal Health. Hello, everyone. I am Osama Elisi, Secretary of the International Plant Protection Convention, IPPC. I take this opportunity to congratulate the Republic of South Africa on the establishment of the crucial biosecurity hub. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the plant health community know all too well how important plant health is for food security and life. In fact, plants account for 80% of the food we eat and produce 98% of the air we breathe. However, we lose as much as 40% of agriculture crops every year due to plant pests and diseases. This amounts to more than 220 billion US dollars in annual losses in agriculture trade. Furthermore, climate change is altering ecosystems, paving the way for new niches where pests proliferate. This has also been associated with the rise in plant pests and invasive species. In the last 40 years, invasive pests have increased by 40% and have cost countries at least 70 billion US dollars annually. In the meantime, more people are going hungry around the world. Last year, 828 million people in the world faced hunger, according to the latest FAO report on the state of the world's food security and nutrition. That is 14 times the entire population of South Africa. As most everyone is aware, the International Plant Protection Convention is the global standard-setting organization for plant health. The IPPC is an intergovernmental treaty with 184 contracting parties or countries, including, of course, South Africa, that aims to protect world plant resources by preventing the introduction and the spread of pests and facilitating safe trade. The main tools to achieve our mission are the International Standards for Phytosanitary Measures, ISPMs. ISPMs are designed to aid countries to safeguard against the introduction of plant pests and diseases and to facilitate safe trade of agriculture products. These standards as well as other tools and resources are readily available on the IPPC website. However, we cannot overemphasize the importance of global efforts and action on all levels to protect the world's plants' resources. 
every partner, including parliamentarians, ministers, government administrative bodies, the private sector and industry associations, research and academia, international organizations, donors, media, and the wider public all have a role to play. As the Secretary of the IPPC, he can count on us and the IPPC's commitment to working together with you to continue protecting the world's plant resources from pests in the most effective and innovative manner. I thank the National Plant Protection Organization of South Africa for leading this great initiative. Plant health and biosecurity are fundamental to all life on Earth. I am certain that this biosecurity hub will be an excellent forum to facilitate sharing of knowledge, enhancing cooperation, and working together to develop ways of strengthening plant health and biosecurity in the region. It is my hope that the establishment of this biosecurity hub inspires everyone to keep the momentum in protecting the world's plants to ensure food security, environmental protection, and safe trade. Thank you. I believe we have one other video, the world World Organization on Animal Health? No, okay. Well, that saves us a bit of time. So I'm gonna call forward. Um, you know, it's great to give instructions. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> so I'm, I'm proud to be able to give instruction to the DG of um, Science and Innovation, Dr. Phil Majraha. Please come forward and, and give a speech on behalf of the minister who are unable, was una who's unable to join today. Yeah, thanks very much, Rebecca. I oblige in taking the instruction from the team at the DSI. So the Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, uh, Ms. Togo Tidiza, you're welcome. The DG of uh, department uh, who could not join, I know he's uh, unable, Mr. Ramasodi. Um, also, I do know that uh, the Vice Chancellor and Director could not make it today, but uh, Dr. Sunil Maharaj, uh, who has already welcomed us, is here. And then acting Deputy Director General from the Department of uh, Science and Technology, Dr. Rebecca. Uh, I'm joined by, I think, a large number of DSI colleagues here. And then, of course, uh, um, uh, acting DG Agricultural Production, Biosecurity and Natural Resources, Management from Agriculture, uh, and the entire team, Minister, from your department. Uh, I also recognize, I think, some people from our science councils uh, from the CSIR. I think I saw a couple of, uh, uh, and the farmers, I've also seen a couple of people from embassies here. So you really are all acknowledged, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start by apologizing on behalf of our minister who sends his apology especially to yourself, Minister, you could not uh, join this event um, because of other prior reasons, but he's very, very excited about this launch. And his excitement was so much that he's decided to send me to talk on his behalf. <laughs> so I just want to say there are four messages that we would like um, to convey today. The first message is perhaps you all asking yourself, why are these two departments today coming together uh, on this launch? So I just want to give a little bit of context why this is the case. Um, on the part of the Department of Science and Innovation, Minister says Cabinet approved our new white paper on science, technology, and innovation in 2019-2020 financial year. Now, the white paper is our principal policy guiding the national system of innovation and it commits South Africa to furthering the role of science, technology and innovation in economic and social development, particularly emphasizing the core themes of inclusivity, transformation 
as well as partnerships. The new white paper on science, technology, and innovation is being implemented through a decadal plan, 2021-2031, which is aligned to the NDP and informed by the work that was done by the National Advisory Council on Innovation that developed a foresight exercise for science, technology, and innovation for 2030. This foresight exercise identified nine STI focus domains for the next 10 years, uh, considering the future of uh, South Africa, as well as the potential of science, technology, and innovation to address ongoing societal challenges and support the creation of inclusive and sustainable economic development. The White Paper and the Decadal Plan also prioritize the revitalization of agricultural sector through research, development, and innovation. We usually call this research RDI. In practice, what this means is developing technologies and innovative solutions that not only increase productivity and competitiveness, but also provide sustainable service delivery solutions. And we've already heard from the biosecurity about how we can use even new innovative technologies um, for making sure that uh, there are delivery solutions that are provided to the farmers. B, creating an inclusive economy and transferring technologies and knowledge to the poor and informal economy. This is one of the focus areas that we'd like to really develop an understanding of and make sure we do it very well. Enhancing institutions' high-end capabilities to develop innovations for inclusive development. So we want to work with the science councils, universities, and make sure that we continue to invest in knowledge and tools that are needed in the modern economy and reduce household food insecurity and increasing sustainability. We are of the view that science, technology, and innovation must support and enhance the strategic priorities of other government departments. For this reason, our agricultural-related work interfaces with the Agriculture and Agro-Processing Master Plan, as you've had, led by the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development. Our efforts in this regard are also aligned with the Economic Recovery and Reconstruction Plan of South Africa. During the State of the Nations address this year, President Cyril Ramaphosa emphasized the need for collaboration to revitalize our economy and end the inequality and injustice that impedes South Africa's progress. The President highlighted the need for a new so social compact between government, business, social partners, and communities to grow the economy. So that's the first point. So just to give a little bit of the history of the project, but I'll stay away from the issues that Manesh presented. On the 13th of November, 2020, the Directors General of the Departments of Science and Innovation, myself, and Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development, Mr. Ramasodi, agreed on an approach for the alignment of the Master Plan on Agriculture and Agro-Processing and STI Decadal Plan. The mechanism of the alignment was a two-tier governance process for monitoring the bilateral relations between the two departments through a steering committee that is chaired by ourselves. Subsequently, a technical task team was established and given formal terms of reference. The technical task team assisted both departments with consultation on the master plan processes, as well as input and alignment with the agricultural priorities that we have on the decadal plan. And Minister, I'd like to say here, this uh, is something that the Minister would have uh, uh, passed on to you and your department, is that we are extremely grateful for this partnership and we value it and we wish to guard it jealously. And the reason why we're saying that, as uh, Dr. Masramula has already indicated, we are almost at the last stages of developing uh, the vaccine strategy. And we think that your department and the capacities that sits in that department makes, us, um, po makes it possible for us to look at one of the platforms that we have identified uh, to have local production in some of the vaccines areas uh, that have been identified. So the core launch approach was proposed then mainly because we as a department support uh, this research development and innovation uh, for modernizing agriculture and the Agriculture Department supports the Agricultural and Agro-Processing Master Plan. 
Furthermore, the agricultural innovation theory of change proposes several multi multidisciplinary and multi-institutional science and technology innovation interventions across the value chain. The aim of the intervention is to intensify agriculture, nutrition security, and livelihoods through new knowledge products, tech transfer and adoption, and the provision of an enabling mechanism such as skills development and training. I will mention the issue of skills training at the end. So the National Biosecurity Hub is a key intervention by these two departments, and I'm not going to go to the details of it because this has been um, provided to you. But we do want to acknowledge the different role players from industry, from producers and growers along the value chain, farmers, research support, uh, and government stakeholders. I do want to uh, say a few words to our academic partners. I know that they are always angry with the department by asking them to pivot their research work to address the needs of society. I hope today they can celebrate with us and say that despite a department that has insisted that uh, the research work that is relevant be done, that at least today you, you can be part of the celebration. So the third point is what is our contribution to this hub? We as a department of science and innovation through what we call Agriculture Biotechnology Innovation Partnership Program, ABIPP, we are responsible for co-funding, coordination, facilitation, and the management of a range of uh, research programs focusing on agricultural bioinnovation products, processes, and services. Professor Maharaj was saying that uh, they need support for this, so we want to uh, indicate here that these programs will contribute to increased productivity, food, and security, and therefore, as a department, we will continue through this ABIPP program uh, to support the work in this area. So this program, ABIBP, is, is, is managed by one of our entities, the Technology Innovation Agency that you see here. And I haven't seen anyone from TIA today here. Maybe they are. And we are very grateful for uh, the support that they provide. So as a department, we initially earmarked about four million per annum through the ABP program. And I'm aware that the Department of Agriculture has initially earmarked about five million but we don't think this would be the end of the funding that would be provided because, as we indicate, research is ongoing and new tools and new innovations would be required, so we'll continue to look for resources. So the ABIPP funded uh, program funded the development of a digital platform to support the piloting of tools and technologies using biosecurity data as a test case, which you've already seen. This platform, the Innovation Hub, Information Hub, sorry, is a cloud-based, community-driven data platform for transdisciplinary research hosted here at Innovation Africa as part of the National Biosecurity Hub. The launch of this National Biosecurity Hub, therefore, should be seen as an intervention to strengthen the existing efforts of all stakeholders to support robust, sustainable, and responsive systems for plant health, animal health, and food security and to achieve sustainability and greater impact in our efforts to ensure biosecurity in agriculture in South Africa. And then the last point is strengthening collabora collaboration with AgriCita. As you know, the minister is the Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation. As you know, uh, the ministry includes both the Department of Higher Education and Training and ourselves, and we would like to refer to the area in which the Department of Higher Education and Training and the DSI are working together as higher education, science, and innovation landscape. We particularly call it the HESI landscape. The DHEADS mandate includes the 21 sector education and training authorities, popularly known as CITAS, one of which is the Agriculture Sector Education and Training Authority, AgriCITA, which has been in existence since 2005. This CETA provides training and development in both the primary and secondary agricultural sectors under a sector skills plan, which is aligned to the overarching objectives of the National Skills Development Plan. Animal health and biosecurity programs are focus areas for skills development in the agricultural sector. Through the ACRI CETA, 
We have concluded a strategic partnership with the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development through a memorandum of agreement. Central to the agreement between the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development and AgriCITA is to further the objectives of the National Skills Development Plan 2030, as well as the objectives of the National Agricultural, Forestry and Fisheries Education Training Forum. In conclusion, we wish to thank the University of Pretoria and Innovation Africa for hosting the launch. And I'd also like to acknowledge the role and contribution of our partners, in particular the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development and the Technology Innovation Agency. Thank you very much. I promise, uh, Minister Titiza, I haven't added much more than what the <coughs> minister had asked me to read. Thank you very much. Titi, thank you so much for those that address. Um, I think you stuck to the point, but also brought um, the importance of that relationship forward. So it seems like you know we learn as there's one thought, one view that you bring through. Um, and they always say, um, expressing gratitude, you shouldn't say just once. I mean, you have 11 different languages. We've only been using English, but um, I think we use English for each speaker. Hopefully you get the points that we really appreciate. So now I'm gonna bring forward um, Okay, sorry, I apologize. You know, I think with um, tw since 2020, we've, you know, we've been doing a hybrid approach, online and in person, and I totally forgot about the guys who are online. So I apologize, um, our online um, colleagues, that um, I, I really apologize. Just because you're not here doesn't mean you're just as important as those who are here. So acknowledge our online participants, um, and hopefully you'll be able to more actively participate when we have the Q&A time, once we do the panel. So um, without further ado, I'm going to invite Minister Nadiza to come forward. Um, she's the Minister of Agriculture, Rural Development, and Land Reform. I must say, you know, I joined government 12 years ago. One thing I learned was the importance of policy, but also as a government official, another thing I learned is that, you know, you have this swagger as a government official when new policies get approved. So. As I walked in and I met Dr. Jafta, Dr. Modisani, I can see that swagger that they had because it seems like you just approved the agriculture and ag agro-processing master plan. So for minister, they were, they were swaggering because there's this policy that was approved in May. So again, thank you so much for, I would say, for the sector, making sure it happened so that the sector had a view of what needs to happen. And I think the importance of having a clear picture and understanding of what you should do is so clear. So floor over to you, minister. Thank you very much to our program director, um, our professor Maharaj. I, I'm not sure where is the VC today because he has been saying monthly he would like to meet with me. So he has missed, missed his third month. We've met already twice, um, but you must just tell him that I was here. Minister Blaine Zimande in absentia, Director General of Science and Innovation, Dr. Phil Mdraha, Director General of the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development, Mr. Mukhedze Ramasodi, in Parliament where you are, in the Portfolio Committee, I left him there, um, with the permission of the Chair and Portfolio Committee members that I must come to this important session. HODs of the Provincial Departments of Agriculture present, heads of state-owned entities, Members of the Diplomatic Corps who are here, our partners in this journey, farmers organization, agricultural business chambers that are here, farmers in your own right, who are also here, Abalimi, leaders of commodity groups and industry association, researchers, scientists, academics, and other experts, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that was a long introduction. San Monan, Ninzan, Nifuge Gashagot, Nise New Vesnam Sans. Kuyekti we umasiglezi in the way in the in the wo Zabantu Abafundi di Mune Abenzu Twaningo. 
uguze sazu kuti senzinja. Nkota ngengiti, ulu azoli ningi baltula giti. Ngoba itine sifika nenginga, ngiti ngbonele silu anesimin. Ngabona loku enkomeni ya mikiza ane mshamba. Safa na la makiza ane ngwajwa en. Bese ge lababa tuwa ninga ya bagiele skolini. Bese ge bona, bea penya, ba penye beseti na nsinkinga. So tinga manya mazu singa bali minjoba sila. Si umkoko la walu msebe nze zeguo na mshanji. Ngiti nje angsige wel jiga yuguze si hamsane songu kutikambe si zile ni na mshanji. O singa yungu bapela. Kwa nke zolo kungenziwa. Uma singe kotida. Angege kwenziwa. Na mshanji ege si uhulumeni. Umnyango. Wezo kwa ningo. Nezo sa science. Kanye no mnyango wezo limo. Nezo mshaba. Kanye no kututuki soga mapanje. Sisha ngenene nyuve si ya sepitoli. Kanye. Nepigo. Lomnyango waga science and technology always wange innovation in Africa. So nke si shangene la uguti na mshange si zobe gisi zinda. La tina njenga bali misi zo tolu kisi zagal. Ngezi nkinga esi pegana nazo iga kulgaze masimin. Loku gegu si zekteni. Lezi ziluanyan, esi esi zivalonjan. Kuye guti, kwe shise umnoto wa logo esi kikuzayo. Kantige futi, umasi huwebele na namazwe anga panji. Amanye au, aye ati, akatembi gashele, uguti kule zinda wesli maguzo, ngabe asina zoyini izi ifo, Eze nziwa izluanyane ez tize. Ez inga ba no mtelela. Bese zifiga. Ez indawe nizabu. Bese utola guguti kwezi nizikati. Batika. Aba sasifu nizi nto zetu. Njenga ma orange nje. Angiti ni azuta ma orange anala ma tofa tofa mnyam. Oktua i black spot. Se silwe salwa na base Europe. Abate abafu ni lama orinja na matofa tofa mnyama ngoba. Abazi gashle gashle guti ngabe anazifuzi. Ni akumbula ngonyaga ka 2002. Sa atola sine sifo sama tele petrelezi foot and mouth. Enda we ni ase kato rich. Es nga gaze sibe na so tina lining zim Afrika. Esa sibi zutu type O. Tina sino SA type 1, 2 and 3. Ama tele nje snao. Hau kukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukuk
Thank you very much. I thought it was important that I take into consideration <laughs> our farmers in particular who are here to understand why you are here today. Because they are an important stakeholder in what we are doing today. I must say that this launch of the Innovation Hub has come at a very opportune time, where globally, all of us are concerned about food security in the world. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, which itself has given shocks in terms of our food security logistics and value chains, but also impacted the prices because of our leakages in the world. Today, particularly, we're concerned about high food prices. We're also concerned about input costs that are increasing as a result of that. But similarly, we're here when we have been grappling for almost two years now as a country with foot and mouth disease in parts of our country, which actually, in my view, it's one of the issues that the, the Biosecurity Hub will have to help us understand, are we still dealing with the same SA type 1 and 2 that we understood? Has it changed its mutation now, given that what we've seen, particularly in the free state around uh, the area of Maquad, where one farm which was under quarantine, you know, then the neighboring farms, and, and, and is it now airborne or is not? I think these are some of the questions that we'll have to answer. But also, one of the things that COVID-19 proved was lessening the divide between animal health and human health. Because as you know, what we have now, or what we know as of now, is that the transmission of COVID-19 to humans was from an animal pangolin as it is said. But nobody at the stage understand how did that mutation happen. And we also know the relationship that as human beings have with our animals. Much more closer, not just the domestic pets like cats and dogs, but also we interface with other wild animals, some of them which we eat as game meat, and I think it is becoming more important that we strengthen the surveillance and also the understanding between the relationship amongst humans and animals so that we can anticipate and also observe if there are certain changes so that we can anticipate how do we intervene to make sure that we curb the spread to even go further than we had seen with COVID-19. So this launch today comes at the time when also our own task team that we set up last year to assist us to understand why are we having prevalence of so many animal uh, disease in the industry so that we can look at what are the gaps in our system, where do we need to strengthen, and in my view, this innovation hub, in a sense, through the power security hub that we're launching today is giving us some answers of how we can strengthen our animal health and plant health system. I also want to say it is a pleasure indeed for me to join this community as we launch this biosecurity hub, which is indeed a collaborative effort of the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development, the Department of Science and Innovation and the University of Pretoria. This biosecurity hub will consolidate and direct activities to support animal health, plant health, and food safety initiatives. I actually laugh because most of the time, you know, when people are trying to be innovative and thinking about new sectors of the economy, they always say, we're a grandmother or grandfather industry. And I say, wow, that's nice. Because it means we have wisdom. 
We've been here, we've seen it all, but we've got a capability of renewing ourselves. And the interesting thing is that we are resilient like old people are because everybody must eat. I always say if it's not farmed, it's mine, nothing in between. You're sitting on the benches or chairs, agricultural products, you know, forestry. And that cloth may be coming from some more hair or something, who knows. So we are there. And therefore, it's quite exciting that again today we talk about modernization in a decadal plan, which means that agriculture is able to renew itself every day. The definition of the term biosecurity was initially limited to control of biological weapons and bioterrorism, but in the 1980s, the term biosecurity was first used in the agricultural sector as being, I quote, the sum of risk management practices in defense against biological threats, close quotes. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization and World Health Organization, biosecurity is a strategic and integrated concept that encompasses the policy and regulatory framework that analyze and manage risk in food safety, public health, animal life and health, and plant life and health, including associated environmental risks. Globalization, demographic changes, and new agricultural production and food processing technologies have increased international movements of goods, animals, and plant and persons, rather. Joba beng shilo ge uguti ngogu ya ngokula, ngokuma nagwe tu na mazwe na mazwe. Loko gwenza uguti kube ngingi ugu hamba kogu ula nezi nto eze seche ze swayo egile noma ngabe eze nyama, noma ngabe eze sasa pagati gwe tu nemi pagati. Ngago loko gwenza uguti ge kube kona uva lo logo ti izi fo zingaba ziningi pagati gwe tu singabandu na lezo zizwe esi kumana nazo ngogo kwebo njalo njalo. As a result, the biosecurity risks have increased dramatically, requiring a holistic and integrated approach to prevention or limiting the spread of pests and diseases in the agricultural sector. And therefore, the expanded definition of biosecurity is more appropriate and equally signals the involvement of other actors beyond just government. Whilst government is responsible for setting and maintaining the biosecurity-related regulatory framework, the scientific community, private sector, and producers have a definite role to play towards a holistic biosecurity system. The biosecurity regulatory framework managed by my department includes several pieces of legislation which supported by an inspection, surveillance, and audit system, quarantine and laboratory infrastructure across the country. The domestic biosecurity related legislation is aligned to the sanitary and phytosanitary agreement of World Trade Organization. SPS. SPS is Nempilo yogufuyuayu. So, gutwege gubizwe nge libo ltepeto li zito usanitari no phytosanitari. Siege sinemte to gule lizwe. Esi sizu guti squazi. Uguti njalo njalo squazi ugeo thola enda wene nsebenza guzo. Kanye nalabo aba na malaboratories. Uguze bonisane uguti ngabe siya ulande la idi umkatango owenzu uguti kufanege sisebenzi sane gashle. Kufigelege abandu the measures are to be science-based and technologically justified in line with the standards set by the international standard setting bodies such as Codex Alimentarium, the World Animal Health Organization, and the International Plant Protection Convention. Adherence to the standards set by these international standards adequately protect human and animal as well as plant life. However, such measures must be scientifically justified, non-discriminatory in support of consistent and fair trade between countries. Program Director, 
our reference to scientific justification is based on the realization that where there is trade, there is risk. Where there is risk, there is tolerance. This is not exceptional to our sector. It also happens in other sectors. The only way, in our view, to address tolerance is through scientifically justifiable requirements or what is popularly known as the appropriate level of protection. And this is what, in our view, this hub will assist us with. This appropriate level of protection greatly advances measures to prevent or limit the spread and introduction of quarantine pests and diseases in order to prevent the potential destructive impact on sustainable production or risk to the territories of trading partners. In recent times, however, dispute has not escaped this disturbing trend despite the existence of an international framework aimed at ensuring fair and consistent trade. Our observations are that unjustified strengthening of SPS measures is directed to inhibit South Africa's competitiveness in key export markets. Admittedly, there is often a political interplay at work when disputes on SPS measures persist. However, it remains important for South Africa to continuously strengthen its existing biosecurity policy and regulatory framework. That is why I'm happy that also our industry partners, particularly in the agribusiness industry, are actually here and are supportive of this initiative. It is important for us to improve the capacities, both in terms of our technical capability, our information and technology, and physical infrastructure. We also need to improve our early warning system and response measures to ensure pests and disease. This biosecurity hub in consolidating research on known and emerging biosecurity threats, human capital development, and the development of biosecurity information hub is therefore key. Find some creative ways to make sure that you also work with the farmers. In partnership with ARC and the provincial research entities in the provinces, this might be a good idea to look at the collaboration at that level. Because indeed, in order for us to anticipate threats, but also to be able to be responsive, we need to know what is happening on the ground. As we are consolidating our biosecurity efforts domestically, it also positions South Africa to play a leading role in the management of agricultural pests and diseases at a sub-regional and regional level. This is particularly important as pests and diseases have no respect for geographical borders. They do not carry passports and are not limited to entry through border posts. You know, at times we go to our neighbors, you know, Pete is now farming in um, Mozambique, some bananas because the climate is good, and Pete sees the cousin visiting and say, hey, yeah, here's a banana. And the cousin find a way to shuffle the banana in the bag and cover with the clothes. At the border post, our control staff, they check and she says, ah, uh, no, it's just my clothes. You know, these dirty clothes. I was in a beach in, you know, Vlankulu in uh, Mozambique. And woo, banana comes, there the disease come. So that's what we're saying, that it does not know borders. Sometimes it's not because speed or Mazondi had been visiting. Some of them can come with trucks. You know the trucks that bring goods from one country to the other? And because we have the port which a number of countries use through Durban port and others, sometimes they leave those diseases. So that surveillance becomes even more important. That is why this 
biosecurity hub will be important for us to anticipate when they do their surveillance so that when there is such a problem, we can nip it in the bud before it can spread in the entirety of the country or even spread it back to the region. So as we look at South Africa in terms of this asset, our eyes are not only limited, but we're also looking at the region so that we can make sure that we create a broader buffer for protection of our agricultural industry. It is important for us to make sure that an emergent threat manifesting in an African country north of the equator cannot be disregarded as movement of people and vectors. Cantal free trade area has come into force with the intention of increasing intra-African trade through deeper levels of ease, particularly important. We hope that this initiative will serve as a model for other countries and as trade is being integrated, can also integrate efforts through biosecurity networks across the African region. As mentioned earlier, international standard setting bodies fulfill a key role in the development of sanitary and phytosanitary measures. These developments are member driven. And as we consolidate biosecurity efforts domestically and potentially regionally, there is a further opportunity to strengthen the regional positions in these international organizations. As you are aware, the agriculture and agro-processing master plan, which have been mentioned, both by the presenter was taking us through what the hub will be doing as well as the director general, has been developed as an intervention in support of the country's overall economic recovery and reconstruction program. The AMP identifies livestock as one of the priority value chains, which has faced several challenges due to the unprecedented number of outbreaks of foot and mouth disease in the country. This is due to many factors, but the most important one currently causing the spread of the disease is the movement of animals, particularly in an attempt to access markets. When we put the country under lockdown of animals for 21 days, I had other people saying, now we can't lobola. But about Hayemagi, Manja Masuti Asifalele Luane Zinga Hambi, so Lobola Ganja and Bomakoti Bed. And I had to plead with them. I said, if you really love that woman, you would not want to use this opportunity to spread diseases to her family's head. So, Himaganj, Spawn, Slamanj. And I was happy that farmers responded. And because of that response, we have been able to open almost the entirety of the country, which has been the good mechanism. And I hope working with the hub, you will be similarly responsive when you are asked to give certain information in order to assist the industry, maybe not one of you. I'm happy to note that the new decadal plan of the Department of Science and Innovation includes a focus on agriculture and positions research development and innovation as a driver of growth in the agricultural sector. DG, you are actually owing us some money which I must write <laughs> an invoice. Through the ARC, there are a lot of students we support and supervise. So part of that money you give to Pretoria University and others, you must just redirect it <laughs> to ARC. We have been very kind enough, but you know, everything is moolah this day. We need the money. I'm also aware that the two departments are conducting, concluding the Memorandum of Understanding, which will further formalize a joint program of work between the two departments in support of the decadal plan and the Agriculture and Agro-Processing Master Plan. I encourage the Directors General of the two departments to conclude this agreement before end of the third quarter of the current financial year to allow key biosecurity initiatives to be confirmed in the strategic plan documents of the two departments for the next financial year. Actually, Dr. Mjoaka, agriculture has become your first guinea pig on the decadal plan. You know, everybody, when they heard about this decade, I said, oh, what the thing are we talking about now? So now everybody can say, okay, 
this is this decadal plan, you know, that you were talking about. Now we can see it in action. So we are proud that uh, we are the first. We wouldn't have been the last anyway, because all of you, when you wake up, you need food. Program Director, Professor Suni, Director General Mjwaha, I thank you for this opportunity to co-launch this important initiative in support, shared vision of improving biosecurity in the country through harnessing existing and improving technical and research capabilities, strengthening of the biosecurity networks in the country and ultimately the region and improving coordination amongst relevant role players. <laughs> We had been talking about this biosecurity, huh? Yani, it's done. I hope Grain SA is going to, you know, part of your money from the trust, you will now contribute a little of it <laughs> to the hub because you know the fall army worm and other things happen in your sector. And I've seen the Citrus people here. Fruit SA. All your fruits, your avocados, your, you know, name it. Your black spots in your oranges. <laughs> uh, we're willing to help you through this uh, biosecurity hub, but we need the mula. <laughs> See, that's my task. I don't want this uh, to fail, so. And our partners, um, even though we are competitors at time, I'm not sure whether some of the embassies, the EU in particular is here, you know, guys. So after this, you will have confidence now that, now this black spot story. <laughs> Scientifically, no threat. So now we're going to write you a thesis about the scientific, <laughs> you know, issues around it so that my oranges can land in Europe. You know, I know Spain produces oranges. But Spain doesn't have the sun like in the south, so they're not as sweet. You know. <laughs> but we can also share the markets, you know, with Spain. So as comparative and collaboration at the same time. And the poultry in Belgium, Netherlands, and France, guys, um, we will help you also to deal with avian influence. I know you heard it last time. Uh, so we can share the knowledge of how we deal with the keep keeps, you know, <laughs> as they are affected by avian influenza. So in that, I'm saying, if you put the money into this uh, hub, we'll also be sharing that knowledge with you to help the agricultural industry in the north as well. And the U.S., not sure whether they are here, but they will get the message. You know, we still want our avocados, so we'll have to give them a scientific, you know, document to support that says our avocados are fine. They don't come with anything. But congratulations, University of Pretoria, for allowing to host this important infrastructure for our country, and in particular, our agricultural industry going forward. I thank you. You know, Minister, um, when you were speaking, I think we never got a chance to give your bio, but I was thinking, surely you were a lecturer or educator somewhere. No. I, learned some, I learned so much. Um, I first learned that agriculture is a grandfather, grandmother sector. That's something new. I never knew. I'm not sure who else um, at the age of 40-something learned these things new. Um, but also I learned that, I mean, this is a catchphrase. I think you must coin this. Um, pests don't have passports or visas. Oh That's a new one, guys. I think this biosecurity hug should be the tagline. But also I think um, when you spoke in different languages, I didn't know what you were saying, but DG was nodding the whole time, so I knew it had to be something nice. Um, but, but for me, we've been talking so much about inclusivity for so long, and you just embodied that in your speech by being inclusive. So I'm going to say, Gia Bonga, Danki, Ray Loboka, 
thank you so much for bringing the case of inclusivity through your actions, right? That's so important. So um, I think before we move further, I think I see um, the next step is the signing of the biosecurity e-journal. So we're gonna have a opportunity for you to, because it's electronic, you have to use your finger to sign on the iPad. So um, please bring forward the, um, the e-journal for the minister to sign. So minister, I think you can come here. policymakers, regulators, as well as the research community and civil society. To facilitate collaboration between role players, the Biosecurity Hub is coordinated through Innovation Africa at UP. The Hub has three main of new pests and diseases. As a result, increased movement of people and goods has also led to South Africa, like many other countries, being exposed to more pests and diseases with pests and pathogens, we can see the very clear trends that they are moving around the world more frequently. Uh, their impacts are being amplified in many cases through climate change. So the one prediction that we can make is that their impact on our agricultural systems and on our food security is going to increase. The simple introduction of an apple into South Africa can lead to the establishment of a particular disease if that apple carries a particular pathogen that is not yet uh, present in South Africa. Collaboration is absolutely key to what we're going to do. Academia can come up with new methods, new tests, uh, new methods of analysis, but that has no impact if we can't get the farmer to implement the right models, if we don't have drugs to treat the animals. Likewise, if government is not playing a role in trade discussions and looking at new test validations and getting other countries to acknowledge our tests exist and that we have the right standards, we're gonna fail. So all in all, it is a triad and we have to work together if we're gonna control diseases and allow for the economy to grow. This holds true for every aspect of biosecurity, from the environment to human health. As such, food safety research and control throughout the agricultural value chain form an important part of the biosecurity hub. Because if food is not safe, it is not food. And although safety measures start on home ground, ultimately, biosecurity requires a wider geographical approach. We are focusing on strengthening the biosecurity system. And by doing that, you're not just doing it for South Africa, considering our porous borders, we are looking at the entire network and working with trading partners within Africa, regionally, we want to strengthen national systems, but to benefit regional trade by making sure our regional partners can be part of this biosecurity hub. It's ultimately a hub that will be of benefit to Africa.
So now we're going to move to the part of the program where we talk to the issue around triple helix relationships. So we spoke to the triple helix as industry, academia, and government. So Dr. Jafta, Julian Jafta, who will be moderating the panel, he's here in the front, um, and we'll be taking the team through the next few moments, uh, or the next uh, 40 minutes. Um, but in, in the interim, I'd like to add the f um, ask the following persons to come forward. Um, I'd like to add ask Mr. Isaac Breitenbach, CEO of South African Poultry Association, to c please come forward to the stage. Dr. Litha, and the CEO of ARC, please come forward. Um, Mr. Gerrit Schutt, the CEO of RPO, please come forward. Dr. Peter Taujard, the Grain SA. M Dr. Miranda Visser, the Director of Strategic Projects and Partnerships in Agriculture at UP. Um, Ms. Fumalani Ratikanga, CEO of Fru Fruit South Africa, and Mr. Sinizwo Bakade, the farmer and founder of Ukanyo Farmer Development and Rocky Park Farming Group. Please come forward. Okay. Okay. You know, um, you always say that, people always say government doesn't work hard, but we do. So our minister came here for a few moments. Now she must go back to her full-time job or her, her day job. So her second job is as an educator. Her first time job is as a member of parliament. So can we have a round of um, applause for our minister? So our panelists to come forward, um, and Dr. Jafta, I will say that when I first met him, I mispronounced his name. I actually tried to say Dr. Chitofa, <laughs> and then he pushed back and said, no, never. That's an, in, an alien invasive plant. So that means that this is a real doctor. He knows what he's talking about, guys. So um, please, you have the next 40 minutes. Um, they're in your hands. Th thank you so much, Program Director. I think a good afternoon, everybody. Um, as indicated, my name is Julian Yafta. I'm from the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development, and I'm very happy to, to host this, this roundtable. Uh, I am mindful of time, so I will try to guide the panelists in, in, their, in their responses. We've heard quite a bit on the strategic intent of the biosecurity hub, but I think it is equally important for us just to get a sense from the various role players on, on their views, because by now it should be evident that um, each would play a very critical and key, key role. So our questions have been structured in a way to give you an opportunity to respond to uh, your views on the partnerships and on the other hand also to give us some sense of what are what what's your in what is your um, what is your position your view on some of the challenges and perhaps some solutions as 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 we go forward? Um, now, Fumalani normally gives me a, a hard time in other fora. Uh, Minister has referred to their fruit exports. It it takes up a lot of our time within the department. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with Fumalani. Uh, Rachitanga, who is the CEO of, of Fruit SA. And uh, Fumalani, I would like you perhaps just to give uh, your experiences on, the on disagreements when it comes to sanitary and phytosanitary measures and how it then impacts on uh, the, the, the South Africa's fruit export uh, trade. Fumalani? Thank, thank you. So you have about uh, three, three, three minutes, and then for the uh, audience, we will also give uh, an opportunity to uh, give us or to participate by also posing some questions. Thank you, Fumalani. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jafta. I think SPS measures have an impact uh, on all food types and on trade. 
But we can't really say that uh, there are disagreements in many instances, perhaps with the ex exception of uh, citrus, uh, on two points. Uh, the first one being the recent uh, false codling moth uh, measures that were put in place that require fruit or oranges specifically to be subjected to extreme uh, cold treatment as well as uh, the fruit also being kept at uh, temperatures um, ranging from zero to one or just below two for 25 days. So the belief is that uh, these measures are not uh, scientifically you know, justifi justified, that the current systems that were the, the systems approach that has been used to control FCM have been adequate and uh, reach provide you know, um, an effective uh, um, protection against false codling moth uh, infestation. And then the second one is the citrus black spot uh, measure that minister also touched on. This is also not scientifically justified uh, as a fruit is not a pathway for CBS. So these as such do not, uh, if you look at biosecurity, just to tie it up with um, uh, biosecurity, they don't pose a biosecurity risk. The issue is more the financial uh, threat that it poses or the, that they pose to the, fru to, the to the to the to the citrus industry because of um, the loss of uh, market access opportunities. But nonetheless, uh, we did say that uh, SP uh, SPS measures also have an effect, you know, on the sustainability of the industry, the cost involved with uh, compliance, and then the issues to do with a uh, loss of chemicals. Uh, that uh, that can be used to control uh, some of these uh, diseases and pests, and then inabi the inability to use certain chemicals due to pressure in terms of um, you know the impact of uh, SPS measures. Some of them are scientifically justifiable, and then there's no contestation around that. It is just those that certain countries or trading partners adopt as a protectionist uh, as protectionist uh, measures to protect their own industries and also make our own industries um, in, um, less competitive. Th thank you, Fumulani. In, in your experience, um, do you think that the, the kind of work that the Biosecurity Hub will engage on will, will facilitate the, the market access process in itself? Because sometimes we have um, extended negotiations with trading partners um, before we can actually enter a particular market, a, a view? Yeah, I think there, there will be scope. I think this, um, the work on in this area in biosecurity does not fall on only one uh, player. I think it requires a lot of collaboration. So I, I do see scope in terms of improving, you know, uh, our market access um, uh, processing of applications um, and opening up new markets and retaining the current ones if such measures are also, you know, put in place haphazardly. So I do see a uh, room for or and scope for, for the biosecurity hub to, to promote or to, to support the work that we do in terms of opening up new markets. Okay, Th thank you so much, uh, Fumulani. I will then move over to um, Peter Talliard. Um, if you okay, you have, you have the mic. So Peter is the, um, the CEO of uh, Grain Essay. So, um, Peter, we know the grain uh, sector is an important, um, has an important role, particularly uh, in, in relation to food security locally, regionally, as well as um, there's also an international reach. How has a biosecurity played a role in successfully extending the reach of the local grain production um, into, into new markets? Peter? Gideon, thanks. Uh, as per our slogan, I think uh, grains and oil seeds, as we see it, is really the chain that, that starts um, to feed the nation. And, and that's really a focus for us. Uh, Grain is, if I just may introduce it like that, it's a, it's a non political, non racial organization that really focuses on the economic sustainability, on the economic profitability of farmers. And I heard our honorable minister saying a few times let's uh, let's take cognizance of the of the farmers in the room it's really on focusing on on that profitability so as you have said correctly it's it's a it's a big role and this morning it was also said many times that if it's not safe it's it's not food so yes very very important to make sure that the grains and the oil seeds that we produce are, are safe but 
going back to industry, I think one of the industries that I want to use an example is, is really the soy industry to see if what, what happens with that and the, the importance that soy play in our local food security and also the contribution to the, to the economy. And uh, it was really an industry collaboration partnership in, in working together. If you look at the past 15 to 20 years where we came from with soybeans and, and where we're at today, we today at the situation where we need to ensure that we can export soybeans uh, and uh, we replaced many tons of, of import oil cake which is uh, typical in your animal feed sector. So the, the key focus was really that there were surveys, there's a, there's, there's a continuous surveys that we need to, to do specifically on, on Southern Death Syndrome and I think that's one of the biggest wins that really need to focus on how do we make sure that we get this industry to grow, that we get new technology, new crop protection products on the market that we can really support and grow this industry and, and other advantage advantages that, that really help farmers to grow their profitability. Profitability mainly because of, of crop rotation that's available. So yeah, a, a crucial role not only in terms of this, but we also heard the minister saying that uh, there's diseases that can spread from animals to, to humans and how we interact. But I think Many times in, in plant production, specifically in, in grains and oilseed, we feel neglected in terms of, of biosecurity because we, we typically feel that biosecurity is an animal problem. But it's, it's really crucial. There's other examples as well. But very often we learned about a farmer, a producer in the Western Cape, that, that got infected by inhaling uh, um, sclerotinia spores into his lungs. Um, so there's also other challenges that we need to focus on and make sure that we are safe. Thank you so much, Peter. And I think the, the important uh, contribution there is, is around biosecurity is not just limited to animal diseases because that's normally where, 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 where the focus is because when there, there's a huge, normally a huge media uh, and, and other outcries when, when there's a FMD uh, out, outbreak. But other diseases such as your, your fungal diseases which can also impact on, on, on human health um, is, is, is co of concern. And Peter, I also believe that we've concluded now the, the soybean um, export program or protocol or we're reaching the end to, to, to China and that has also had a very significant collaboration between the between government as well as well as your your, your, your industry you want to perhaps refer to that as well? Yeah, and the key focus is really to make sure that you're well in time because you need to envision this coming. We need that futuristic view because uh, it's, it's actually perfect in time because given the season where we came out and the season we're going into, we really see that farmers are going to produce more soybeans this year. And uh, all of a sudden you need this, I want to call it the exhaust valve where you can export some of the products if you have too much and obviously also earn this, this uh, vital foreign currency. But just uh, another point in terms of other diseases, one is really crucial if you look at our staple of, of maize is really MLN, uh, maize lethal necrosis. And uh, then also in, in terms of wheat, wheat blast is another uh, disease that we just want to highlight. Those are two things that we really need to keep an uh, eye on and make sure that we have our early detection systems in place to, uh, to, to be able to react once that is a challenge. Th thank you, Peter. And those those um, early detection can only happen if we have active surveys in place, if we have the nece necessary te technical capacity to deal with it. And one one thing that Minister also mentioned was around the that a pace in the in north of the equator we can't we cannot just disregard. And one other example is where South Africa is already collaborating with other countries um, to, to, to assist them with some of, some of diseases that are of concern to us, not yet here, but if it has to establish here, it would be a, a particular uh, economic disaster for us. So we are already collaborating with them to, 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 to assist them with their, with their surveillances. And this is where it's important that we, we the work and the network that we establish here also starts to, to extend beyond the borders of South Africa. Sin we um, before we just speak to the, 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 the big commodity organizations, 
perhaps as a producer where profitability and sustainable production is, is key to your, to, to your operation, can, can you express a view of you know, what, what does biosecurity mean to you as a, as a farmer? Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, so, so I'll just speak on, on, on someone with working with producers on the ground. Uh, in the Eastern Cape, we, we in an organization of Kanye Farmer Development, and uh, we're mentoring and supporting 2,600 farmers that are grain producing. Um, and I think to us, obviously, productivity is important, uh, profitability, uh, you know, and quality, all those elements influence the bottom line in the end for the farmer. Um, and I'll speak to specific grains. So, so I think with our farmers down there, including myself and many others uh, that are in the grain industry in the Eastern Cape, I think with biosecurity, it, it becomes paramount because if you don't have practical measures in place to control, um, you know, pests and diseases in, in when w your farm or the other farm, the farmers within the communal areas, because that's where we actually support the farmers. It's in communal areas. So we're constantly looking to, to develop the farmer and teach the farmer to make sure that, you know, they're implementing implement, um, practical ways to control, obviously, the pest and disease. So, you know, quality seed, uh, certified seed, when you're buying seed is important. You know, the, 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 the ways we, we, we used to do it, uh, particularly as someone who grew up in the rural areas, you know, umbi la uvuchalwa ukoko, inkinga yete besienza, bestata leo mbeu, sipinde sifuno kuicha ala food. And inkinga lapu isekteni enena, ngege ukwa zuktola isivuno esibonaka layo mausukombisa imbeu la oitenge kona kula manda benzi imbeu ekilongwayo. So it's important that you know, those practical ways are ways in which we, we, we teach the farmers at particularly at the ground with no biosecurity measures in place. Maunga kwa zu kuse luku la kwa ako na ngeendle la o o uveli sa ngayo. Vele uzabwa nengi nga yokuti imali ngegu ibone gashu. Nengle lo uveli sa ngayo nugu uvelo gwenzayo. Ngege gu vele ngayo. Thanks. You are from the Ukanyo farm of, 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 of the, the producer um, as so it's beyond just the the uh, commodity organizations the researchers 